Hey there everybody, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and I am making another video of one of the more popular and iconic machines that Singer produced. Of course, I restore vintage home sewing machines and I have a number of models that I restore and I've been doing over the years. Uh, Singer is probably, arguably, the best known brand. There are many great brands. Singer is not the only one. But they were the biggest company, <clears throat> once the largest in the world, and they they had a very long history, and in the vintage era that I'm speaking of, and they made they had a lot of great machines. It wasn't like they just made one model that was great. They had a series of them, uh, and they made a few that weren't so great. But the ones that I restore are all models that I consider uh, part of their their legend their legendary machines. And you're looking at one. This is the Singer 201K. Now the 201. Uh, that was made for quite a few years was a successor to the Singer 66. It has a drop-in style bobbin. It has a, a very wide throat or harp space, as some of you call it, in nearly eight inches. So it's about an inch wider than most vintage sewing machines. And it has a rotary hook, unlike the 66. And of course, when they introduced the 201, uh, which Singer did what they what they almost always did. They kept the older models in production, so you could still buy a 66. They just kept adding new models. Now, this model was made during World War II, and I suspected that it might because it has a side plate that is in what's called a black side finish. This is typically what is used to refer to, um, it looks, it's a metallic finish. It's not paint, but it was a plating process, and it has sort of a black if stainless steel was black, you may have seen some of the new appliances in this new finish they call black stainless steel. This was a plating process that they developed. Uh, traditional parts, and some of these parts still have it, were plated in nickel, and that was to protect them from rusting. And, but during World War II, there was a shortage of nickel in many metals, and so they had to develop a process where they could, could uh, coat the metal and, and still be able to produce machines. Now, there weren't that many machines produced during the Second World War because many of Singer's factories were producing other things. They had a lot of contracts with the federal government uh, and the military to make war armaments. So if you were able to get a brand new sewing machine during the Second World War, you were lucky because there was a limited supply. And, uh, but I went back and checked the serial number on this model, which is... Uh, a like Apple, F like Frank, 794310. And I did check on the, um, the uh, serial number listing, and sure enough, it was made uh, during the war, I believe 1941. And it was made in Great Britain in the factory in Kilboy, Scotland. Now, uh, I mentioned to you that this is a 201K. The American 201 is the most common that you see in the United States. It is an awesome machine. The American has the direct gear drive potted motor, which is uh, one of the best motors ever made. Uh, and it is the most common. They take a great deal of time to restore, as does this 201. And part of the way I price them is, is based on the uh, amount of time that I spend. So what is the main difference between this and a, an American 201? I think I've mentioned in my other videos, the main difference, in fact, the only real difference at all, is the way the motor and the hand wheel work together. Because the same exact machine, if you looked at the gears, the body, the bobbin, and uh, the hook, the thing that makes that beautiful rotary singer straight stitch that you guys have been hearing me talk about in all my videos, this machine is just like the American one. In fact, if you didn't see the motor or the hand wheel, you would say you couldn't tell the difference. But the, <clears throat> the main primary difference is the hand wheel. Because the American hand wheel does not have a groove for a belt because it doesn't use a belt. It is a direct gear drive machine. It has a hand wheel, of course, but there's no place for a belt. The um, motor that was used on the British version is a rear-mounted motor, and it's a BT motor. It's a very classic uh, Singer electric motor. It was used for many years, many decades, on many types of Singer machines. So it's a, a rear-mounted motor as opposed to the American one, which is built in. Uh, it is directly geared to um, the machine itself. In terms of stitch quality, I have not been able to tell any difference. Some people believe that the British versions have a slightly higher RPM. They sew slightly faster. I don't know if that's true. They both make the same beautiful stitch. So why would you, why would any of you care, right, other than I'm just giving you these, these geeky details? The primary reason <clears throat> is collectability. In the United States, this machine was sold in America. It was imported from Britain. 
And the reason was because there were some people in the United States who thought they might want to treadle. And if you wanted to hook up any sewing machine to a treadle uh, table or use a treadle belt, you were going to have to have the hand wheel that had a groove for a belt. And you couldn't do that with the American 201. So to get the British version, they would ship the head or the main body over from Great Britain. They would fit it with American electricals. And they were extra expensive. The American 201 was Singer's most expensive machine, and this one was even more money, primarily because it had to come from Great Britain, and they had all this extra effort they had to do. It was just, it was just simply not sold in, in nearly the higher numbers uh, that the other uh, American version was. So, you know, it's really about a numbers game in terms of collectability. Now, for many of you, you may not care about collectability. You simply want to get a vintage sewing machine that makes a wonderful stitch. It's been restored by someone like myself, and you really may not care. And I've sold American 201s, and when you sew on a 201, you'll, you'll understand why people love these machines. Uh, there is a, there's a quality to the stitch that's legendary. But again, the primary reason you would want to buy a British version is this A, if you ever want to treadle it, or if you're a collector, because there are, you will see these occasion, occasionally, but they're very rare. And one thing adding slightly to its collectability is the fact that it has a black side side plate, needle bar plate. And that tells us it was, it was a smaller production number. Again, I find that most sewers are not so much worried about its collectability as its condition. And it's, you know, it's ready to sew. It's, it's been gone through like I go through all of my machines. So for any of you who are collectors, let me know. This machine, I haven't priced it yet. I will be going on to Craigslist soon. It's going to be priced um, very likely $75 or so more than I would normally price an American 201. And that simply has to do with the fact that it's more collectible. Uh, but it still takes uh, a very long time. I spend more time on 201s than just about any machine that I restore. And it has to do with the way their shuttle mechanism is designed. Um, it, they just require a lot more time. But I think they're worth it. And those of you who love these machines and have bought them from me in the past, uh, I believe you guys certainly agree because you've been willing to pay for the extra labor that I have to invest to bring them back. So uh, without further yapping, let's do a little sewing and show you guys how um, how she sews. I'm going to basically run some fabrics. Um, I was doing some test stitching here on a light. This is a very light muslin fabric, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with sort of a medium weight fabric here. One of the most remarkable things about a 201 is the incredibly quiet sound that it makes when it sews. It is arguably one of the quietest machines you'll ever sew on, period, no matter who made it. Even it's the quietest singer, I believe. And as I was coming across here, I don't know if you guys hear a little clinking. That clinking is actually the spool that's moving against the pin. And... Um, of course, I can slow it down and get that wonderful control. Singers have probably the best needle control of any vintage machine. Um, almost every singer was engineered this way. <clears throat> it doesn't mean they're any slower than the other brands were. Uh, every brand and every machine design has a certain level of speed. And now I'm s speeding her up. You will notice that 201s... Uh, so slightly slower than most models. And that's just by the design. That's how they were engineered. I'm going to come over and I'm going to make a shorter stitch because this is a rotary machine. I can get a very fine stitch. I would argue the shortest stitch I've ever seen on any vintage machine comes from rotary hooks. Uh, some of the white Kenmore rotaries can do it, but the singers probably take first prize. If any of you like to sew knits, this is an excellent machine to use if you're not going to be using a zigzag. Okay. I'm going to take this off, guys. I want you to see this. One of the reasons I do the videos, other than my getting to talk about the history of the machines, which I love to do, is to show you the stitches. So let's take a look. And if you look here, I'm getting good light today here in the sunroom. You'll see this is the longest stitch, and then I went over and did a very short stitch, and that's... That's a remarkable level of quality. Then you can see on the back here, you'll see the, uh, let's see if I can get this to focus in for us. Let's see here. You'll see the, there we go. That's the uh, bobbin thread on the other side. Um, 
<clears throat> Let's see. Make one more run here. I don't know how, how well it pulls up, picks up on the video. Just how, I'm going to go back to my long stitch. Just how, oh God, just how quiet the 201 is. Um, my personal machine is a 66 Singer because my needs for stitch quality and straightness are not the same as, as others. Some of you, um, I mean, you can sew garment leather with this machine, but this machine is at its best when you are doing, you know, formal gown, couture sewing. Quilters love these machines because of the stitch quality. Um, all of my machines sew beautiful stitches. The one that, my 66 that I use, it sews a great stitch. Not a problem. But if you are going to, let's see, there you go. And there you can see again the, uh, the quality of the stitch. I'm <clears throat> noticing that when it comes to extra fine quality stitches, quilters and gown sewers uh, have the highest standards. And they have to because um, those, those kinds of projects are situations where people really actually go up and stare at the stitches, right? So when someone's wearing a wedding gown, people look very closely at the quality of the sewing because it's a special occasion. Or if it's a couture gown and someone's paying dearly for that, they're going to want really fine stitching. And of course, quilters, obviously, it goes without saying, they want their stitches to be extra beautiful um, because quilters' stitches are, you know, they're artisanal. People are creating works of art and uh, people are staring really closely at those stitches. So I'm going to come over here. I've got a slightly heavier fabric. This was drapery fabric. You guys have seen me use it before, still using it. Go back to my long stitch here. And of course this again uses the uh, drop-in bobbin. Other, other, by other names it, it is called the um, 66 bobbin. It was originally developed for the Singer 66. And again, this was the successor machine to it. I don't know if you guys see what I did here. I just did like a little U-turn. Straight stitch singers from the vintage era are renowned because they have narrow feed dogs. And you can do, you can have a lot of fabric control if you ever want to do free motion work. So I'll pull this off. Okay. And you guys can see, and I've got a bright yellow thread here, so you can definitely see the quality of the stitches. Um, this machine is, uh, like I said, it is the British version of the 201. It is not superior in its stitch quality. The main difference is it's slightly more collectible. It simply was quite rare in the United States. It's extra rare because of the black side. It has, <clears throat> if any of you want to treadle this machine, you can. I suspect most people who purchase it simply want the stitch of a 201. So, uh, also in the photos, you will see pictures of a uh, buttonholer. And I may, at some point in the future, do a separate video on the Singer buttonholer and my favorite buttonholer. There's one that will come with this. You'll see it in the photos. I will have gone through it and maintenanced it as well. Uh, it's all metal and needs it needs service, believe it or not. And um, and then also you'll see pictures of the cabinet. This cabinet is unusual. All the, the, the vintage cabinets are amazing. They were all built very solidly and of beautiful woods, cherry, um, you know, mahogany, um, uh, maple. But this table is walnut. And you will see that they actually match the veneers. They did book matching on top. Uh, walnut tables are not as common. I managed to find this one. And I was really excited when I did. I don't see them very often. Um, I don't know if they're like super rare or anything, but, but if you enjoy the incredible pattern that you get with a walnut table, this is one of the nicer that I've seen. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, you know, if you have any questions or comments, just let me know there on, on YouTube. But again, the Singer 201, a legendary machine. This is the British version. But uh, whether you have an American or a British 201, you are sewing with one of the best machines ever made. There are a lot of great machines from the vintage era, and the 201 is one of them. Thank you.